Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovalt and in this video I'm going to be going over polarity, that is the polarity of bonds and how that relates to the polarity of molecules. So in this video we're going to be talking about how electrons are either shared equally or unequally depending on the atoms that are bonded together and their difference in electronegativity. And we'll see how that leads to the polarity of bonds and how uh, the polarity of bonds and, um, can lead to the polarity of molecule if, um, if it's symmetrical or not, right? So if it's not symmetrical, we'll see that it is polar. If it is a symmetrical molecule, we'll see it's nonpolar. Okay, so let's get into this. So um, let's start with the question of what's happening inside covalent molecules like O2 and, and H2. So we're going to use an analogy uh, where we're going to use um, polar bears and penguins uh, to represent the different atoms. So here's our representative re representations, and you can see here um, that for O2. Uh, the polar bears are going to represent oxygen and the hydrogens are be, going to be represented by the penguins. And so remember, so the size of the animal is, is representing the amount of electronegativity. So remember, the electronegativity is the measure of how strongly the atom attracts electrons to itself in a bond. So the electrons in a bond are either more or less strongly attracted to an atom depending on its electronegativity. So an analogously, the um, ice cream cone here is being shared uh, strongly. So the polar bears have a, a greater, a stronger pull on the ice cream cone than the penguins do. So the penguins are smaller they're weaker, they don't have as much of a pull, so they have a smaller electronegativity, which, uh, which um, represents the hydrogen atom in this bond. And the other thing I want to point out is the uh, number of scoops of ice cream in the cone represents the number of electrons that are being shared in the, in the bond, right? So we know from our Lewis dot structures that oxygen has a double bond, and so each bond in, in an, a molecule, it has two electrons, and so since there's a double bond here, we have four electrons, which is represented by the four scoops of ice cream on the cone. And since the two polar bears are equal in strength, they're sharing the ice, creams, uh, ice cream cone with the four scoops equally. So that is analogous to what's going on in oxygen. Since both oxygen atoms have the same electronegativity, there's no difference in electronegativity between the atoms of oxygen. So therefore, the four electrons in the double bond between the two oxygens are shared equally. So um, this would be a nonpolar molecule uh, because the electrons are shared equally. And the same thing here, you can see that we have these two weaker penguins that represent the hydrogens, and there's a single bond. If you remember, there's a single bond between the two hydrogens, meaning that there's two electrons. So here we have only two scoops. And since the penguins are equal in strength, they're going to share the ice cream equally. So there's no polarity in the bond here. And uh, I'll just say right now, and I'm going to talk about this again, what we mean by polarity is an unequal sharing of electrons where uh, one side gets the electrons a bit more than the other, and that's going to cause a negative side and a positive side. So if you think of the, um, the uh, poles of a magnet, the sides of a magnet, you have a positive side and a negative side. Um, so that's where this idea or uh, notion of polarity comes from. So the electrons in these two molecules are shared equally because the two atoms are the same and they have the same electronegativity. So therefore, the electrons are shared equally between the two atoms. Now, what if you have two, a molecule where the two atoms are not the same? Well, there's going to be a difference in polarity. 
So if the difference in polarity, uh, if there is a difference in polarity between the two atoms and then that difference is large enough, you will end up having a polar bond and maybe a polar and, and a polar molecule in this case because you only have two atoms. So molecules become polar when the electrons are not equally shared. So this is um, <coughs> um, represented by the analogy of where you have a smaller penguin uh, trying to share an ice cream with a larger polar bear. And so you can see here that the uh, penguin is much weaker than the polar bear. So the polar bear is able to uh, pull the ice cream and keep the ice cream cone with it and away from the penguin. Although you could, the, the, they're both holding on to the ice cream and this represents the bond. If we go back to the other slide here, the uh, bond is represented by the holding of the uh, the holding of the ice cream by the two bears. So you can see their arms are connected here. So there's a bond between the two polar bears because they're holding on to the ice cream, sharing it equally. And the same thing with the uh, penguins. They're holding, they're both holding on to the ice cream and they're sharing it equally. So that's your covalent bond. That's, that's representing your covalent bond. So here in this uh, example where we have <coughs> excuse me hf and um hydrogen again is represented by the penguin and uh the polar bear is um represents the uh fluorine in this case because fluorine has a much larger electronegativity right so and the bear the bear is much stronger so the bear or fluorine is pulling on the ice cream cone much more strongly than the penguin or the hydrogen. So the bond here is, um, again, it's a covalent bond between the penguin and the polar bear. Uh, but the electrons represented by the scoops uh, uh, of the ice cream, scoops of ice cream on the cone are not shared equally between the two. So you could see here this HF. Uh, molecule and here you can see this arrow now this arrow is is a way of representing polarity and so because fluorine has a much stronger electronegativity and we know that electronegativity is how strongly the atoms pull how strongly the atom pulls the electrons toward it um, then fluorine is going to pull those electrons more closely to it, and fluorine therefore um, is going to keep the electrons more than the hydrogen. And we know that electrons are negative, so by keeping the electrons with the fluorine, uh, that's going to give fluorine a what we call a partial negative charge. And since the electrons, the negative electrons are being pulled away from the hydrogen, that's going to end up giving hydrogen a partial positive charge so there's your poles right you're like just like the magnet i was talking about earlier you have a negative pole and you have a positive pole so here in this molecule we only have one bond in the molecule and that bond is polar because the electrons are not equally shared they spend more time over here than they do over here and we represent that by an arrow and this is called your dipole moment the arrow always the arrow of polarity always points towards the more negative side, the more electronegative atom. And so that represents the negative side. And then you have a little plus sign here. And that plus sign here <clears throat> represents the positive side, the less electronegative atom. And so that's how we represent the polarity in a bond. And since this molecule only has one bond therefore the molecule is polar because the bond is polar whereas earlier with oxygen and hydrogen those bonds were not polar because um because the electrons are sh shared equally and because you only have two atoms then the oxygen molecule and the hydrogen molecule would be non-polar because the bond is non-polar so if we look at water, 
<clears throat> you know, what, what if we have molecules with more than two atoms, right? Um, if you only have two atoms, then the polarity of the molecule will depend on the polarity of the bond itself. If the bond is polar, then the molecule is polar. If the bond is not polar, then the molecule is not polar. But if you have more than two atoms, you're going to have more than one bond, and therefore it gets a little bit more complicated. And that's where you're going to have to think about the symmetry of the molecule. So here, water has two hydrogens willing to almost give up the electrons, right? Because, uh, and you have one oxygen. And, one, and the oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogens, the two hydrogens. So the oxygen is going to be pulling on those electrons in the bonds more strongly than the hydrogen. So you're going to have unequal, um, unequal sharing of the electrons in the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen. And so that's what you see here with the polar bear and penguin analogy again. So here, again, you've got your covalent bond here between the polar bear's arm here holding on to this ice cream and the penguin holding on to the same ice cream cone here. So that's your one bond um, between the oxygen represented by the polar bear and the hydrogen represented by the penguin. And then you got the second hydrogen bonded to the oxygen here. And both bonds have two electrons represented by the two scoops of ice cream on the cone. And you can see that the polar bear is holding on more strongly to the ice cream cones. And so it's, it's pulling on. The bear is literally pulling the, the um, penguins across the ground <clears throat> because it's much more, it's more, uh, it's much stronger than the uh, penguins and so the and so and then we that represents the uh, the stronger electronegativity of the of the polar bear compared to the penguins and so um, you could see that's represented by this molecule here this uh, picture of uh, o and two h's so water h2o and you can see that the oxygen has a larger electron density. The electrons are being pulled more to the oxygen. And so you can see the arrows of the bonds. The arrows of the electrons are, are showing that the electrons are pointed towards the oxygen. They, the oxygen is pulling more strongly on the electrons. So they're going towards the oxygen in both bonds. So that's going to give the oxygen a more negative charge. <clears throat> so this side of your water molecule has a negative charge. And this side of your molecule with the hydrogens <clears throat> are going to be positive. And so you can see that both arrows are pointing in relatively the same direction. They're pointing towards the oxygen. So that means this molecule is polar <clears throat> because you can see that it's not symmetrical. There's no symmetry in, or there's a lack of symmetry in the, in the water molecule. So you got one side that's negative, one side that's positive, and so you got a polar molecule. <clears throat> but what if you have symmetry? In, in, we, uh, in carbon dioxide, uh, we, we know, we, when we draw our Lewis dot structure, um, you know that the electrons repel each other. And so the electrons in one bond want to repel each other from the other bond. So there is a theory that I forgot to uh, talk about called Vesper theory, and we haven't gone over it yet, or I do go over it in another video. Um, but for the purposes of the video, let me just say that the lone pairs, when you draw your Lewis dock structure, you have lone pairs on the oxygen. Well, electrons are negative, and so what's causing the asymmetry? What's causing the lack of symmetry in the water molecule? Well, the, the most important thing, the really important thing that you need to remember is that the lone pairs on the oxygen um, are repelling the electrons in the bond uh, between the hydrogen and the oxygen. So instead of being across from each other, remember, 
these electrons here in the bond are negative and these electrons here are negative and so because they're each negative they want to repel each other they want to get as far away as possible and so the farthest they can get is is a, a straight line on opposite sides of the oxygen 180 degrees well if uh, they can't do that because you have uh, lone pairs on the oxygen the lone pairs are not drawn in this figure but they're there and so the lone pairs are uh, the electrons in the lone pairs are going to uh, repel the electrons in the hydrogen they're going to push them away and so that's why the the hydrogens are kind of pushed to one side of the molecule so that it doesn't have symmetry now if we go to carbon dioxide well carbon dioxide if you draw the Lewis dot structure remember that there are no lone pairs on the central atom carbon so there's no no electrons are going to push the bonds away so here the electrons in the bonds are going to repel each other and they're going to be pushing each other to opposite sides of the carbon so here you actually do have symmetry and so you'll notice that the arrows here are going in opposite directions so they cancel each other out so this causes carbon dioxide to be a nonpolar molecule so you can see that here where you got the carbon in the center which is the weaker electronegative atom represented by the um, penguin and you've got two bears two polar bears on opposite sides um, that are representing the oxygen which are the more electronegative atoms so um, you have one polar bear pulling on this ice cream to the uh, right you have the polar bear on the left pulling its ice cream to the left and you got the penguin in the middle so it's a straight line so you got this bond here on the opposite side of this bond here so this is a symmetrical molecule and so even though you have po polar bonds yeah this is a polar bond right so this is polar because the arrow you can see that's polar you have the arrow pointing this way this bond is polar it's pointing that way but because of the symmetry they cancel each other out so the whole molecule is non-polar even though the bonds are polar so um, CO2 has one carbon surrounded by two electronegative oxygen, but it is not polar. So electron density is still symmetrical, which, which makes it nonpolar. So the symmetry of the molecule is what keeps the uh, molecule polar, even though the bonds, I'm sorry, keeps the molecule nonpolar, even though the bonds are polar so symmetry destroys the polarity um, of a molecule even, um, uh, even though the bonds are polar so here's a couple of pictures you can see so here you can see that the chlorine molecule cl2 has is a non-polar molecule because again you have two of the same atom bonded together and so because they have the same atom it's the same electronegativity and so they're pulling on the electrons in the bond these two electrons here they're pulling on those two electrons equally so therefore there's no polarity in the bond there's one side does not win over the other here with HCl you have two different atoms and so the chlorine is more electronegative and you can see that the electrons are pulled here and so you can see that there's more electron density here uh, compared to the hydrogen and so the electrons are over here more so that's going to give this side a partial negative that squiggly line that kind of looks like a cobra uh, with a negative sign that's going to be like a partial negative side which means that the other side is going to be a partial positive and so here you see polarity in the bond, which means that you're going to have polarity in this molecule since we only have two atoms. And here, if the, uh, if the difference in polarity is so great, 
um, then instead of sharing, one electron is going to be transferred. And we know that when an electron is transferred, that creates a, an, an ionic bond because um, one, you're creating two ions, one positive, one negative. And so when we're talking about ionic bonds or ionic substances, we don't really, um, we don't discuss polarity. Polarity doesn't really apply to ionic substances. So don't, we don't talk about ionic substances being polar. That doesn't, doesn't apply to them. So we have to be careful about polar bonds versus polar molecule. So if you have a difference in electro, electronegativity between two atoms, that's going to create a polar bond, right? Um, but just because you have polar bonds does not mean you have a polar molecule necessarily because you have to pay attention to symmetry. If the molecule is symmetrical such that the polarity of the bonds cancel each other out, then you're not going to have a polar molecule. So let's look at these examples. So here we have uh, these three molecules, which the bonds are polar, and the molecule is polar because of the uh, lack of symmetry. So here we have hydrogen and chlorine. Chlorine is more electronegative than hydrogen, so the, the bond is polar. So that means this side is more negative and this side is more positive. So there's your asymmetry. Your asymmetry is the fact that you have different atoms bonded together, right? You have a negative side, you have a positive side. Here you have, again, a difference in electronegativity between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. So you've got three polar bonds here. All of the polarity is pointing towards the nitrogen. The electron density, the electrons are being pulled towards the nitrogen. So the negative electrons are here, making this a uh, partial negative side of the molecule. And then this side of the molecule is going to be positive, partially positive. So you got a po you got a negative side and you got a positive side. And so you can see the asymmetry, the lack of symmetry in the molecule be by the fact that all these arrows are pointing in relatively the same direction. So there's an asymmetry there. You could see asymmetry in the this last molecule on top on the right because you have three hydrogens bonded here on the bottom and you got chlorine bonded on top. So you got different atoms. So there's asymmetry. There's your asymmetry. You get, they're not all the same atom. And so you could see that um, hydrogen and uh, carbon, you could see there's no polarity in these bonds. They don't have polarity in the bonds, but you have polarity in this bond because the electronegativity difference between chlorine and carbon are this are different, are vastly different. So you got one arrow pointing up. You don't have any arrows pointing down, so there's your asymmetry. So again, you can see that there's asymmetry because you got four atoms bonded to your carbon and they're not all the same. So that gives you an asymmetry. Now on the bottom, we have two molecules where you have polar bonds, but the molecules are nonpolar because you have symmetry where the polarity of the bonds cancel each other out. So here you have uh, boron with three fluorines bonded to it. This is your uh, uh, boron trifluoride molecule. And so here you have the electronegativity difference between fluorine and bro bromine, uh, bromine, or I'm sorry, bo boron. Is, uh, very, is large enough to give you a polarity in the bond. So you have an arrow pointing towards the fluorine. So you have three arrows, each arrow pointing towards each individual fluorine. So you have three polar bonds. And so you can see though that if you, if you look at the electrons in the bonds, these electrons again are negative. So the two electrons here are negative. These two electrons are negative. These two ele electrons are negative. And so they're going to repel each other and they want to get as far apart as possible. So the only way, they, the farthest away that they, they can get from each other is 180 degrees, like a, like a pie split into three equal pieces. So there, this molecule has the same atoms bonded to the central atom. There's no lone pairs. 
And so therefore, this is a symmetrical molecule, and therefore it is nonpolar, even though we have polar bonds. Same thing here. You have a central atom carbon with three, I'm sorry, four equal atoms chlorines. The chlor difference in electronegativity between the chlorine and the carbon is large enough to give a polar bond. But because you've got the same number of atoms bonded to your central atom, um, they're going to be spreading out equally around the central atom because there's no lone pairs. There's no extra lone pair electrons on your central atom to push the, uh, the bonds to one side. Um, so this is going to be symmetrical and therefore nonpolar. The polarity of these bonds cancel each other out. Okay, so <clears throat> there are three ways to diagram dipoles. You can use this space filling model here where you got this um, density, this, this little bubble around it with different colors and the, the colors represent either positive or negative. That's kind of hard to draw. Um, here on top, you have two representations. You have uh, one where the, you can use an arrow. So oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon and hydrogen. So the arrow would be pointing this way in the bond. So if we're looking at this bond here, we will, that arrow is pointing towards the more electronegative oxygen and away from the less electronegative um, oxygen. As you can see this plus sign, that means on this side of the molecule it's plus. And since this is, there's no like line here, it's just a, a horizontal line that represents the negative symbol and so that means the oxygen is going to be a partial negative. And so you got polarity in the bond, and then you got polarity in the molecule because of the asymmetry. Um, also, in this one, you can represent it by partial positive, partial negative signs. So this cobra looking symbol is the delta symbol. Um, but you can represent, you can understand this as partial positive. And this is partial negative. So because the fluorine is more electronegative, it's going to be pulling the electrons in the bond more closely to it. And so therefore, fluorine gets kind of a partial negative charge to it, while the carbon then gets the partial positive. So here is a, a nice flow chart to use that's helpful to determining whether a molecule is polar or not. So the first question you want to ask is, are these ions? Are there ions present in the, in the substance? And if the answer is yes, then it's an ionic compound and you don't talk about polarity. So polarity doesn't apply. Um, if there are no ions and you go to the next question and you ask, are there more than two atoms? If not, then the next question is, are both atoms the same element? Do, are, are the two atoms bonded together the same element or different elements? If it, if they are the same, um, excuse me, if they are the same, uh, then, um, then the molecule is nonpolar because the two atoms have equal electronegativity and they're pulling on, they're sharing the electrons equally, so that's nonpolar. If the atoms are different, then no, it's, uh, uh, then it's going to be polar. The, the, the electrons are going to be shared unequally between the two different atoms. Now, if we go back to the question of are there more than two atoms, if the answer is yes, there's more than two atoms, then the next question is, is the Lewis structure symmetrical? So here's where you have to think about the lone pairs on your central atom or, um, or not, and the fact that uh, electrons are negative, they want to repel each other away as far as possible. And so if you've got a lone pair electrons on your uh, central atom, that's going to probably push the other bonds to one side, and that's going to cause polarity. If there are no uh, lone pairs on your central atom, then that's likely to be symmetrical. So if it's symmetrical, you would say um, nonpolar. If it's not symmetrical, if there's a lack of symmetry, then that's polar.